All right, here we are. This is the follow-up from last video, integrating Facebook lead forms into Go High Level. I'm gonna show you guys how simple it really is. First of all, we gotta go into our main account where we manage everything for our clients. And then we go into settings and then scroll down to integrations. Once you guys are in the integrations tab, you guys just link your Facebook page. It's pretty self-explanatory. It shows you how to do it. I'm not gonna bother going over that. But linking the automations is a little bit more detailed. So you guys can see, I have a previous lead form here that was never set active because I was supposed to be working with a client and I had everything set up and they're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do this Facebook stuff. I don't really think we need to have more ads on Facebook because we already get so much walk-in from word of mouth. So I didn't make it active, but I'm gonna be doing this with you guys live for the barber test form. I already have it set active right here uh, in my ad manager. So let's go ahead and make this active. Everything is the same thing from the form we did from last video, we picked email, full name and full number to be in the form. That's all the information we wanted to capture in the lead form. Then we click save and it'll be active. There we go. Now let's go move over to the automations tab and make sure everything's linked up correctly. And here we are in the automations tab. I'm sure you guys are getting used to this because we've gone through it so many times. We could start from scratch or we can look at the other templates they have. For this situation, I'm actually gonna go through the appointment booking template. I'm gonna just go through this because it already has most of the stuff we need set up for the situation. And we could rename it to whatever we want. I'll do barber test uh, booking. That's probably pretty appropriate, right? So now I'm gonna add a workflow trigger here in a minute, but let's look at this automation real quick. Pretty much when they go ahead and get notified by submitting a form, which we'll add the trigger here in a second, they're gonna get a text and it's gonna say, hey, whatever their name is, thanks for taking advantage of our offer. The next step is to book a quick consultation call. Uh, you guys can't really read that, there you go. We're not gonna do the consultation call because they already know, they don't need a consultation call for a haircut, right? That's just the template that they already have there. So we can just keep the first part or change it to whatever we want. And what I'm about to do next is I'm gonna call on them to respond to this automated text by adding text yes to confirm your appointment. This is calling on them to respond to my text message. And when they do respond, they'll fall into this funnel uh, in this branch. It'll say great. And then I'm gonna change this response to being great, thanks for confirming we're looking forward to seeing you soon and then that'll be that and that'll be the end that's what the flag's at so it's going to finish that entire sequence here in this follow-up text if they did not respond to the initial up here I'm gonna say hi blank name don't forget to confirm your appointment just type yes and we'll know you're ready to go Essentially, that's just calling on them to respond to the text if they didn't initially follow up with it. And I could also add the name of the company, like, hi, Blake, this is this is company name. Um, I could do that as well to remind them who's contacting them because a lot of people sometimes get spam texts and stuff. This would basically be like a callback to who is reach, even reaching out to them because just a reminder, it is a following day and people do forget things. So I always think that's a pretty good way to reinstill who you are and how you have their information and why you're contacting them. That's just gonna cover all those points and then from that point forward, if they are still interested, of course, they'll go ahead and type yes. I think this is also worth mentioning as well. The reason why I have the word yes is because these commands say yes and we wanna make sure everything flows in sequence and flows without any error because what basically happens is when they type yes, they're gonna fall into this funnel like I had mentioned already, right? But here it says intent positive, like was it a positive response? And a positive response is yes, that's the call in, in the automation. So if they do respond positively, then of course they fall into the rest of this. But if they didn't respond yes to this, they're going to fall e either into this sequence if they didn't respond at all, or if they responded by saying something else other than yes, they would fall into this and then they would fall into the no category, which would then be an internal notification for the company, AKA the barber shop, to follow up with this customer and follow up with this lead, I should say, to reach out to them, whether it's to call them, text them again separately or manually. Whatever the business owner wants, it's really up to them, but this is just the default message in the internal notification. I'm gonna change this to saying, make sure to follow up with, and then we'll do their full name. So here, I just typed this up real quick. Make sure to follow up with whatever name they abandoned their appointment. And pretty much the business owner is going to get notified uh, by, via internal notification, like it says in the mobile app, that this person didn't go through the entire automation and they lost interest at some point. 
So that's pretty much that. We have to add the workflow trigger as well. But we have to select Facebook lead and then we're gonna to go to add filters. Then we select inform and then click barber test and then we click save trigger or whatever the name of your form is. That's what mine is on Facebook and my ad manager. That's really it. Now, once this lead form is submitted on Facebook, they're immediately going to fall into this automation. If you guys really wanted to and you guys wanted to have a different system, you guys can make something from scratch, but I prefer to use something like this because it's already pre-built and all the moving pieces are really set in stone. All I gotta do is change some of the text. And now before we go ahead and save and publish, always guys, make sure you have allow multiple enabled just to make sure in case anyone wants to fill out the lead form more than once or they abandon the lead form and then re-go back to it. Once their information is already in there, if you have it deselected, they won't be able to re-enter the information and fall in this sequence. When you do have it enabled, they will be able to go ahead and re-enter their information more than once if they needed to do so. So they could always fall into the sequence or automation, whatever word you wanna use. And then if they respond to your text and respond to the automation, just turn this on. So if you have, for example, four follow-up methods for whatever you know business you're working with, say it's for uh, a restaurant or something, and you have a four sequence follow-up system, and the lead responds to the second text, well, then the other two, the third and fourth, wouldn't be sent because they would have already enabled the stop on response and they won't be bothered anymore in your sequence. So it really depends on what your approach is with this, what you want to accomplish, depending on the niche or business model. A barber, you know, a barber is kind of pretty easy to forget, I would say. Uh, a lot of people just get their hair done, especially guys for this example, get their hair done once every two, three weeks. So it's not really uh, you know on your mind all the time. So having a sequence and an automation system that kind of fits different niches is something to consider. So that's pretty much it. It's straightforward for the most part. This branch can get a little confusing. So if you guys did want to, of course you can go from scratch and build your own. It's real simple. I have videos on my YouTube channel as well, how to automate different things and how to create automations in a pretty clear and concise way instead of doing this entire system. But I do recommend you guys mess around with a lot of the automations and you guys can test them out. You guys can go click test workflow and see on your free time how different things work, how different responses work and, and just understand this entire system. But other than that, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys are enjoying the course so far. I know it's a lot of content, especially in the Facebook uh, portion and lead portion. I know it's a lot, but trust me, this stuff is so much better and so much easier. Instead of doing all the manual garbage that you would usually have to do for a traditional SMMA. So guys, I'll see you in the next video.